It is a huge honor today to be interviewing Thomas Mitchell. Thank you for spending an hour with me today. Oh, anytime, Howard. And uh, you, uh, you, you talk about and you teach at the dental school practicing ideal dentistry. And my, yeah. And my, my question to you to start with is, you can't get two dentists to agree that today is Friday. How do you get two dentists to agree on what is ideal dentistry? Because remember, you and I are old enough. Remember back in the day, like 25 years ago, when Reader's Digest took a set of study models and x-rays, and they went to 30 different dentists. Yeah, and, yeah, how, and everybody and, gave a different plan. 30 out of 30. And all the dentists sit there and said, oh, Reader's Digest was bad, and this is horrible journalism. I'm like, dude, Reader's Digest is on the desk, a nightstand of every dentist's mom and grandma in America. You know, it was journalism. So so my, my thoughts on you, 25 years after that Reader's Digest article, is dentistry gotten any more consistent? And how can you say what's ideal dentistry when there's 150,000 dentists in America, 2 million dentists around the world, and they can't agree that today is Friday? Well, rest <laughs> rest <laughs> restoration should hold up over, over time. And um, <clears throat> my feeling about what I do – um, is I look at I look at the stuff on Dentaltown. I mean, my whole practice has changed since I've been involved with Dentaltown. Uh, um, there's not one procedure I do that Dentaltown hasn't influenced. Uh, and with your six thousand posts, you've influenced me and everyone else. I am a huge fan, and thank you. Thank I, you. I can't believe you have taken the time to share six thousand posts. Well, well, thank you. You know, it's, it's my obsessive compulsive disorder. So. <laughs> um, well, don't tell your doctor. I, I don't. I don't want you to get cured. <laughs> no, my son's a psychiatrist, so he won't treat me. <laughs> um, when I look at the work that I see on Idle Town, posted by like Howard Chasselin and and Mike Melkers and and, and Lane Ochi, and, and and I look at when they when they're starting to show their cases. You know, and I, I look at that and I say, well, that's exactly how I would do the case. Like that. So when you look at a body of work from guys who are really, really uh, well known throughout the profession and much better known than I am, and 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 uh, really do ideal stuff, ideally. Uh, when I look at that, you know, it's like I'm seeing my work. Mike is showing a case right now on Dental Town where where it's a wear case and he's waxing and, and I mean, this is exactly how I do things. Uh, um, about a third of my practice, you know, a third of my practice is hygiene and a third of my practice is just basic general dentistry, doing restoration <laughs> simply. And then, then the other third is in, in, this, in this more comprehensive area. Uh, um, and, in, and in that area, then how I do things is, is, is I take the case on models and records or what I take it back to very basic stuff. And I just look at, at the basic concepts that we know in dentistry that hold up over over time of, of, of occlusion and embrasure and contour uh, uh, and try to and try with that one third of my practice that we actually need some kind of comprehensive care, then that's that that's I'm I'm trying to take them back to very basic Basic idealism. Well, you, you've you been doing dentistry for 43 years, and yeah. you yeah. teach at the – you still still teach at the dental school, right? Well, yeah, a little less than I used to, but that's because we changed the curriculum a little bit. But, but So, yeah. so, so what, I, what, I, what I'd love to do is – my, my, what turns me on is to transfer information from legends yeah. like exactly. you – Exactly. To people who um, are younger, I mean, I mean, so I, I look at the, um, I, I kind of look at dental towns as an arbitrage play, you know, and that's all we do. We do, we, if gold selling for a hundred in London and ninety in uh, New York, you know, you buy it in New York and sell it in London, London, and so I want to try to get the information that you've picked up over forty three years and transfer it to the people who have only been doing this for ten years. What do you think are the most common mistakes? Um, not remembering the basics, not, not remembering uh, um, just very, very ideal concepts. We, you know, the, in the program I teach at, at the U is, is, is I work with the first year kids, uh, um, and it's in dental anatomy and occlusion. 
And and the one thing I see on Dental Town where people make mistake is that they don't try to when they're restoring something they don't try to make it ideal. They don't go back. It's like they don't remember the concepts of of. Of, 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 you know what a second premolar looks like. You know where are the grooves. Wh you know what what a lower incisor should look like. Uh, uh, and when they see a wear case um, where all the anatomy's been wiped out or half the anatomy's been wind up, wiped out, then then they, they get kind of afraid of uh, of, of just restoring and re uh, restoring. And, and, and at that point, you just restore right back to base basic. Tooth anatomy. It's it's it's, it's really that simple. Uh, the I, I think a lot of people look at that and they say, well, you know, comprehensive care and 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 and, and I hate the term full mouth reconstruction, uh, but but reconstruction um, is so complex and it's really not. It's really not. It's really very simple, basic stuff. Of you're going back to to level occlusal planes, normal length of normal tooth uh, uh, anatomy, uh, very basic concepts. Okay, so my job is that there are seven thousand dentists listening to our average uh, uh, show. So I'm I always try to guesstimate questions. Uh, what because with Dental Town, no one should ever have to practice solo again. So most of my fans are. Uh, listening to this on an hour commute to work. That's what probably 90% tell me. They say, I have an hour commute to work, and I, I um, throw this on, on, uh, <laughs> on, um, on the Dental Town app, and I'm playing it through my car stereos. So, so, so you just said level occlusion, level occlusal field. Is that what you said? Level occlusal plane. Level occlusal plane. Okay, someone didn't get that. What, what, what is a level occlusal plane? And well, how we all know about Curve of Speed and Curve of Wilson and, and those – but, but basically, so that when you go from anterior to posterior, then the level, of the, the plane is basically flat. Maybe a slight curve up, but, but not a lot. So that, so that you can develop mutually protected occlusion, so that you can have the, the anteriors disclude the posteriors. Uh, if you have the posteriors in really strong uh, uh, lateral function and you're just putting way too much stress on them and that's when you're going to see a lot of wear when you still can have some kind of anterior guidance uh, uh, then you're going to protect the posteriors from fracturing but 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 so many people lose their anterior guidance due to wear or breakdown or, or the, they, they, they have teeth extracted you know, here in Bellevue I'm practicing in this really high dental IQ area so so I see cases on dental town of, of people that have you know multiple extractions and missing teeth and broken down stuff and a lot of that stuff I've never seen in practice because of where I practice. Uh, if I practice 20 miles east of here, then I'd be doing dentures and and and, and I and I swear I I haven't done a denture in years. Dent dentures yeah. are still alive and well. When you when you look at the lab data, dentures never that's, slowed down in that my just twenty. That blows my mind. <laughs> well, the United States gets one, one million immigrants a year. Your your up your immigrants come from Canada up there in Seattle. No, and they're our, coming from they're coming from India right oh, now. Microsoft right, is down my, the street. Okay. You know, yeah, and yeah, but and but I'm down here on the um, Mexican border, and yeah. and um, dentures are. As long as we're getting one million immigrants a year, and a big part of them are from poor, more poor third world uh, or yeah. poorer countries, there's removable is still huge. In yeah, fact, in yeah. fact, the lab here in Nogales, uh, their dentures units have gone up every year for the 30 years they've been in business. Yeah, so I, I want I want to ask you a couple of occlusion questions that that um um confuse people. They say things like. Why should I care about the Curvis B and the Curva Wilson when every time a kid gets orthodontics, the orthodontist is um, as uh, altering the Curvis B and Curva Wilson? And the second question I hear the most about occlusion is, um, well, you know, you know, if I do this 33 point beautiful, I mean 33 degree beautiful occlusion on a denture, um, the studies I read show that the zero plane uh, denture teeth have the highest customer satisfaction. 
How, 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 what are your thoughts when I say those two two? Well, dentures are different than natural teeth because because you've got to have bilateral bilateral posterior occlusion, balanced occlusion on a denture, otherwise the, the darn thing is going to tip. Uh, and and so yeah, zero plane flat stuff on a on a denture is one thing, but but on but on um, but in natural teeth, you, you know, we we try to get a little bit of disclusion with the posterior teeth when the People slide from side to side, and uh, um, my mentor, uh, um, he was one of the guys that that developed the grad pros program at UW. And, 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 and when I was in uh, in in the program, I had a three-year program um, um, in the 90s. And when I was in that program, that was when John Coist and Frank Spears were in the grad, the other grad pros program at BU. Uh, uh, what we were trying to do, and what we talked about then, and my mentor talked about, it, is 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 you know you, how much how much disclusion do you need when you're building a case? And we said, well, when you build a case, then you want a you know a millimeter disclusion. So so the, sep- the so as the mandible sl- slides, then you get a, you get about a millimeter of space initially between the the posterior teeth. But in in actuality, in in actual practice, m- most of us try to just develop a group function uh, occlusion, lateral side to side group function. You know, we don't care that much if we have to have just a canine disclusion, but if we can have canine first and second molars all functioning simultaneously when you slide to to one side, then that seems to be what people bring in mostly. That's that's mostly what I see. And what what do you think? Um, because you only know what you know, and you just don't know what you don't know. I mean, I always about so many times I've looked at my cell phone, and I think to myself, could you imagine if you walked up with a cell phone back in uh, Salem, you know, two hundred years ago, and said, "If you talk into this box, you can talk to someone in the next county." They would have thought you were a witch. And they probably would have drowned you. It probably would have been some yeah, kind of yeah, black yeah. magic voodoo. Yeah, and put I was, you in the stockade. And, and I was thinking to myself, you know, when, you, when a patient's feeling anxiety or and, and you're sensing it and you're intuitive, and I always think to myself, I wonder if 100 years they'll discover some cell phone mechanism that their brain was actually talking directly to mine by some radio wave. Or, you know, we only know what we don't know. I, I want you to take that. What do you, When dentists don't pay attention to occlusion and they don't know what they don't know, what what is biting them in the butt that if they would have paid more attention to occlusion they wouldn't be having this problem and they and they just don't know that the reason they're having this problem I mean what, what do you think it is because when I go into dental offices and I look at schedules it seems like twenty percent of the schedule is production and eighty percent of the schedule is oh just a bite or you know it doesn't feel right or uh, check or suture removal or, you know, it, 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 they're only 20% they're building us them. So when, when a dentist does a filling and they have to come back twice because and adjust the bite or a crown or a filling, what, what, do, what do you think they, what, why do you think that is? What do you think they don't know than they could have done differently? They don't recognize um, what the patient feels. Uh, so, so you do a filling, and and the patient's anesthetized. Uh, um, you see the crown with a patient that's anesthetized, and and you, you know if you check you check the occlusion, uh, and and you've got ideal markings. You think everything's fine, but you don't recognize is 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 what the patient what the patient feels um, when they wake up and close together, and and if if your restoration is is like two tenths of a millimeter high, it's going to bother them. Uh, you know, you have to allow for the movement of uh, the movement that's that's inherent with the periodontal ligament. You know, teeth move around a little a little bit. When we do our um, when we see a single crown. Or do a filling. The first thing we do is we take shim stock, you know, the mylar paper, and we see what what teeth are touching uh, on either side of the, of the restoration. And and then when we finish the restoration, we try to make sure that that the the teeth on either side of the restoration and on the opposite side of the arch still contact, still are still contact, and that they contact maybe a little bit stronger. 
than the restoration. So when you have the patient close on the on the shim stock right over the restoration, it'll kind of slip a little bit. Uh, I think the base the basic things is that they don't under, they, they don't recognize that with anesthesia, it's you know it's very difficult to get your occlusion just ideal. And for guys guys like you, another um, another question. You know, you you talk about simplifying procedures, making them yeah. Um, yeah. simplifying. Um, oh God, what, yes. do you do? Do, do you think um, I'm going to just throw out a bunch of questions about an impression? Do, do you think on a single unit, unit crown, a quadrant tray is enough? Yeah, you do. And can that tray oh, yeah. and can that be a disposable plastic, or does that need to be? Yeah, a plastic? yeah. I, I use sideless disposable plastic trays for singles. Maybe maybe sometimes two crowns. In fact, I did I did I did was doing 18 and 19 um, uh, monolithic zirconia crowns last week on. And we, and we got them. I, so I did, well, it's 18, 19. You know, you always have a problem problem with, with the occlusion on 18. And so I'll do full arch impressions. So we did full arch impressions. They came back millimeter high. You know, I had to, I had to send it back. It's the first case I've sent back forever. Had I done that, had I done it with just a check by tray, it probably would have been ideal. So so yeah. so help these dentists out. When, when, when do you recommend full arch impressions versus a sideless triple tray? And do you have a brand on that sideless triple tray? Is it? Premier. Premier, that, yeah. I was, was going to say that, but I didn't want to I didn't want to lead the witness. You yeah, that's, that's what I use, sideless Premier <laughs> triple tray. Yeah. They, so so, so the, when, when, should, when should a dentist think full arch? When you're, when you're dealing, I think, with more than three units. More than three? Three units, three, three units or more. Three units or more. You know, I mean, you really want to you, you really develop good, solid occlusal contact good solid vertical contacts when in your in your in your impression and um, I mean there are cases where we we have we have the the little sideless premier trays we have another tray that's a little bit bigger it's not it's not sideless but it goes almost a full quadrant and and on bigger cases and that's what it should be used on that one case you know we joke here that we you know I miss one impression a year and so I miss that in January so I'm golden for the rest rest of the year and, and really you only miss one impression a year <laughs> no oh you're kidding oh i only lie about i lie about that but, okay but but uh i miss very i do miss very few but but a longer sometimes a longer quadrant tray is better you can get some to go you can get full arch quadrant or full arch uh check by trays as well although you can't use those if you're if you're working on a post the most posterior tooth because the material will ooze out the back of the tray they don't have a bar across the back you've uh, the you've posted six thousand times since in the last eleven years so yeah. you I know you could talk about anything um, um, talking specifics uh, to, to these dentists driving to work right now do you want to do you, what what procedure do you want to simplify for them do you want to if you're good at impressions, do you want to walk through the impression technique, or what? What what procedures did you want to simplify today? Most, yeah, a lot of people complain about their impressions, and which surprises me because impressions for me are really, really simple. Uh, well, um, when I whenever I'm in someone's office, um, it looks like I would say eighty percent of the people are taking two or three impressions and trying to see which it, one is the best. That just blows blows my mind. I mean, I, I do that. I literally do that that maybe four or five times a year. That, okay, then walk it. through specifics, brand name specifics. Do you pack a cord? What kind? Yeah. You, you know, the I whole do. thing. And and be as detailed because the only complaints okay. I get on these podcasts is that I don't do enough of them, and I don't. The the dentist is uh saying generals and not specific. He'll say I use composite, but he didn't say what kind or something like that. Okay, I start with a rubber dam. Almost all the time, I have Isodry, but it's difficult for me to work with, and and so I almost always use a rubber dam. I I if I'm doing a lower first molar, I take out all of the old dentistry that's in there, and I and the initial thing I do is I go right down to clean tooth structure, and and then at that point I take and uh, do my occlusal reduction, and then I do a buildup, and my buildup procedure is and I do a build up on everything uh, uh, um, my build up procedure is I'm using John Kankas stuff so I'm using surpass one two three and then and then over the deep areas um, um, uh, over all the, the, the dentin basically a little layer of, of opaque white Titan flow 
um, and then um, and then on if I if I'm not doing Emacs, uh, then I'm then I uh, my build-up material is um, quite opaque Apex uh, Anchor called, and then I and then once that's cured, then I do my basic prep still with the dam on, pop the dam off, and and immediately uh, I pack my first cord. And the cord I use is 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 called decnatal. Uh, it's uh, double lot silk suture is what what it is. I can use any other you know just Patterson some generic uh, double lot cord too. Uh, but at, at Washington, you know, I grew up on deck natal, so I just, I just use that. And I pack that. It takes me, you know, literally 10 to 15 seconds to pack that. I, I make a loop and either hold the loop in hemostats or just in my fingers and, and just lasso the tooth and just tease it down under contact, under, under, under the margin. Uh, snip it so, so the ends meet pretty close pretty close to, to perfect and um, and 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 that has and that will retract the tissue about a half a millimeter and so at that point then I'd lower my my margin to the top of the tissue so that the, so so the margin is going to be at the top of the tissue or only a half millimeter below if I have to go below tissue yeah, um, uh, in approximately is usually where you have to do it, and that tissue isn't ideal. Then at that point, I use my electrosurge and I and I clean up that tissue so so the tissue is as ideal as I can get it. And I, <laughs> and I what's your electrosurge? God, I don't know. It's sitting over there. What is it? The Strobex Mark II. It's, it's old as the hills, but it works. Uh, um, then. Then I make sure that, that I don't have I make sure that I don't have any sharp corners anywhere on the prep that the prep is round I mean not not circumferentially of course but and I always have retentive grooves but I make sure there's nothing sharp on that prep so that so when that impression material hits the prep it can just flow it doesn't get turned uh, uh, then I then I pack with a with a single lot cord. That's uh, it's, it's uh, uh, just a plain cord. It doesn't have epinephrine in it, but I, but my my assistant soaks soak it in um, viscostat clear clear uh, from Ultra. opalescence. Yeah, ultradent. Yeah, great stuff. And and um, then I pack that. And then I walk away. I go 10, 15 minutes. I go. That's where I get six thousand posts. Is I go. <laughs> Look at my computer. I go talk to. I mean, I'm old. I want to talk to people now. So, so I go talk to my staff. I go, I go whatever I do, uh, um, and and then after that has set, you know, and before I leave, I also pack some cotton down into those inner prox, or just a two by two, down into those inner prox and put pressure on that tissue, and then I w walk away. Just leave it alone. 10, 15 minutes. I go do hygiene checks. I go look at Dental Town. I go, I go tease my staff, or whatever, whatever I feel like doing. Then, the, then I come back sometime. You know, ideally with our schedule, then I'm going to see another patient, <laughs> get another case started, uh, which, which does happen some of the time. And then I come back 10, 15, 20 minutes later. And we take the impression, and it's just a simple thing of taking yeah, so off. You have, so you have two cords in there at this point. I have two cords. So do you pull that. the top cord? and then I, the I, 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 I pull the, the, the two by two out. I wash and dry the prep. Okay. Then, then at that point, we, we mix the impression material. You know, we have the guns. We have, I'm using 3M quick. Uh, um, 3M imprint quick, and so we have is the guns. That with a light light body in the gun. Is that a putty? medium body with a medium body and a heavy body? Not their light body. The light body is too light for me. And I and I have a a plastic syringe for in that we put we put my light body or my medium body into, and um and it, and at that point once I once I it's all mixed and ready to go then I. Pull the first cord, the top cord, and and inject. Circumferentially, I try to go around twice and make sure everything's 
covered occlusally, and then the, the, the check bite tray goes in and the patient bites into it. So you're not blowing down the first layer? No, no, no need to. No need to you, blow down. You just, introduce, you just introduce air and bubbles doing that. No, it's all dry. I've dry dried it, pulled it out. The whole thing's dry. It's not bleeding. It's, it's just really ideal. The margins are, for the most part, high and readable. So, so when you when you when you do your prep, are you doing a shoulder, a shoulder, the bevel, or you have a chamfer? Our final diamond is has is a straight diamond with a forty five degree angle uh, tip, and and so I base it's a basic kind of a bevel all the way around, but it's very smooth, very flat, very smooth. You know, minimal up and down stuff, just just nice and flat all the way. All the way around, or maybe a little bit higher. In the when you're product. done, when you're done prepping your prep, do you ever hit it with like a soft flex disc or sandpaper or anything? You don't do any of that. And but you, you also dropped that you did. You put groo grooves in there. Sure, vertical grooves. Talk, talk about yeah. that. Uh, when I when well, I got if, a for, if there's a furcation, of course. I mean, and you've seen the stuff on Dental Town about treating furcations that the the the. the uh, Danny Melkers and Howard Chasselon showed. Uh, um, um, then I then if there's a frication, I groove that. I take the roof off that frication as much as I can, and and have a vertical groove. It'll be on the buckle, in most cases. Sometimes it's on the interproximal, but a vertical groove that goes from gingival to occlusal, and it's got a taper as well, so it draws. You know, it's got, it's got a, the, they have, they have to. Have, Preps have to draw this way, and they have to draw that way as, as well. I can have a groove. And, and then I give my lab instructions that, that I want them to follow that groove all the way from, from gingival to occlusal so that the, the, the buckle side of that crown looks almost like two fused premolars. Exactly. Uh, um, on interproximally then, you know, at Washington, and when I was in, in school, then it was all inlays and foils, and, and so we were, we were doing, doing uh, uh, grooves, uh, vertical interproximal boxes and interproximal grooves, and so that's my training is to do that, so, so, and I can do that very quickly, so I almost inevitably will have a, a groove, a groove or a box form in an interproximal area, just so I resist lingual displacement. Now, you got out of school in 72, right? Yeah. So you you probably uh did you ever see um did you ever did you ever do a gold foil? You did oh, gold yeah. foil. When, when do you think they officially what's that song the night the music died what was that when they have uh, Buddy Holly's playing with them? The night the music this, died. What was the what, where's the, the song? 70s. Where where's the song for the night the gold foil died? Yeah, God Almighty. It's in the in the 70s, I'm sure when when we started to get when we started to get uh, uh, some of our bonding, I mean, as soon as we started so to have bonding, bonding, some bonding, bonding ability, but you, bonding. tell me, tell me if uh, if you agree with this. I, I'm in Phoenix, so we get our more more than fair share of retiring people. A lot, a lot of them are from Europe. <laughs> I'm gonna come down to work. I'm gonna when I retire. I'm, I'm you know I got a, that condo in Scottsdale. We're gonna come down, and move into it, and I'm gonna come work for you. Well, I'm telling you, I'm in all seriousness. If you ever decide to do that, you have a job. I, uh, no, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm doing it. I, I'm, I got I'm four absolutely, more years. <laughs> I'm absolutely serious. You could because because yeah. I'm such a big fan of your post. You could do clinical. You could do something in the magazine website, whatever. I but want to do denture adjustments. <laughs> denture adjustments. <laughs> yeah, I um, but but um, when I if someone asks me after 28 years of doing this, what's the longest lasting restoration? I mean, I still see gold foils on 70, 80, 90 year old people that everything else has gone to hell, and that gold foil, and it's like, you know, there's you know, it, there's gaps you could that you can see with your naked eye. I um, I believe I believe that that gold. There's something about this this high surface energy gold that bugs just don't want to live by it. I think it has that bacterial static property. Because it just doesn't make sense. I think you're Look. right. And, and same thing with gold inlays. And you, you know, when I was younger than I, uh, uh, um, one of um, Bill Farrier's, you know, you know the name Farrier, uh, one of his patients came to see me. Uh, she was in her 80s at that time. And, and she, had, she had every type of restoration that was possible to do in her mouth. And 
Every one of them was ideal. It was it was the most impressive thing to see what this guy had done with, with I mean, and we're talking porcelain jacket crowns that he'd done himself and seated, and they and they'd been in there for thirty years, and you know they weren't glazed anymore, but everything else about them was perfect. It was just a very impressive to see. So yeah, those concepts that that came through, through from from those guys starting those procedures in gold where in order to do anything with that stuff you know you had to be precise and accurate and and those are the restorations that we see hold up so when you talk about practicing ideal dentistry using comprehensive dentistry in everyday practice i mean um talk to these dentists uh listening in their headphones right now what do you think after how many years you've been doing this 43 years what what do you think um is is a definition or, or um, descriptions that this is a comprehensive dentist and this is not really a comprehensive dentist. Well, we, we talk dentist. about that a lot in staff meeting. And, and, and what we say is that, is, is that, well, look, you know, we're like Nordstrom's. And Nord, Nordstrom's is across the parking lot from me. We're, 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 we're like Nordstrom. You know, if somebody comes in and they want to buy a pair of shoes, we're going to sell them a pair of shoes. But we're also going to say – after we've sold on the pair of shoes, we're also going to say, you know, there's some other things going on in here, and, and, and maybe we really ought to take a close look at, at some of this stuff. And, 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 and the way that you do that, of course, is just with a comprehensive exam. And, and so then hopefully then they'll schedule for the comprehensive exam. Patients come in, and they, and, and, and they haven't seen us before, and they have a broken tooth, and they want the broken tooth fixed, we fix the, the broken tooth. And, and then we go, you know, there's a reason that thing broke. You know, maybe you want me to take a look at, take a look at that. And from that point, then, we go into comprehensive exams, which includes, you know, it's the full meal deal exam. Okay, okay. Well, would you mind going through in, in detail what you're getting this lady back, that she came in once and you were consumer-friendly, patient-focused, and she wanted her broken tooth fixed, you fixed it. But now you've earned, earned her trust and love and respect, and, she, and she's going to come back for a comprehensive exam. Exactly what do you do at a comprehensive exam? Well, we, we, we of course, we... We have a digital pan now, so we take a take a pan and then we take a look and see if there's any other extra any other period goals that we want to take. You know, it's all it's all digital now, and 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 you know, I mean I can't take an extra anymore. So. <laughs> so so then then we start with charting, and we and we chart her existing restorations, missing teeth, and then um, any. Any defective restorations or areas of obvious decay, you know, we get that charted. And um, then I do periocrobing, and I do my own periocrobing. You know, a lot of guys rely on other people to do that, and, and I know why. Uh, uh, but I just sit down and I do, you know, three, three or six probes on, on every tooth. And um, then we chart the recession and mobility and and um, the amount of attached tissue they've got. And from, from there, then we go into, okay, is this class one, class two, class three? How much you know, percentage of overbite? You know, millimeters over jet? You, you know, CRCO? Have, really, I'm just checking for is, is MIP, can they actually close into an MIP without sliding around? And what um, is MIP? Uh, um, their acquired bite. Can they, can they close... When, when their joints are functioning nice and smoothly and evenly, can they hit their MIP? That's my definition of centric relation, centric occlusion. And what does the M and the I and the P stand for? Um, uh, uh, um, maximum intercuspation. Okay. Okay. So just get their acquired bite, make sure that it's reasonable to do, you know, do they have any wear? How much wear do they have? Uh, um, we measure the range of motion, max open, right, left, any deviation, any noise in, in the joints. Um, then uh, um, uh, what's the periodontal classification, you know, AAP 1, 2, 3, what is it? And then we go through uh, muscle palpation, um, and just basic muscle palpation. You, know, you have to kind of learn how to do that. 
you know, check down for cancers down on the throat and under the tongue and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then we take a ser series of extra oral photos, sometimes some intraoral photos if there's some obvious stuff, but always a, a series of extra oral photos of a, of a smile and then, and then uh, you know, retract lips, uh, 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 have them a photo with them biting together and slightly and a second one slightly apart and then right left photos in occlusion and then an upper lower photo. I, I, we, I, we, I, want, I, I want you to stop about that because most of these dentists listening today say, "Well, that's something you do. That, that's what the orthodontist does. Why, why, why would you take oh uh, intraoral camera photos and why would you print them out?" I, I print them out uh, um, um, just because uh, I've been doing it so long um, before we could get, get them into our uh, into our computer system. Um, then we then we just started printing. In fact, I used to have to walk over to the square and and take a roll of film over there and have them do prints for me. But now we print it out here on a, on a little HP printer. Um, but then we've got that we've got that print printed in the chart and it's so handy for me to pull that out of the chart and and look at that when they come back in and and, and um, have something broken I've got what it used to look like um, if I've got to go through a more detailed explanation for them I can take and I can draw on draw on the photos uh, um, I can show them real clearly on the photos or on, on, the, on the computer screen either one um, um, exactly what I'm looking at, so that so that I teach them what I see, and and let them know what I'm seeing and what I what I think is a problem. And why why um uh now is this an extra oral camera or an intra oral mm -hmm. camera? Is this a camera? This extra? Oh, yeah, it's a little. It's just sitting over there. It's a little rinky dink. Pick, pick it up. Point pick, shoot. pick pick it up. Sorry, I, I didn't have the right depth perception. I thought you could just reach over and over and grab that. I didn't mean to make you get up and walk. Just walk up, you know. I need the exercise. So, so why? Why? It's, it's a little. It's an Olympus two point five thing. We kind of. Uh, um, Is that made just, just little, for dentistry? No. no. It, it's not. No. It's an Olympus two point five. Olympus two point five. It's old as the hills. It, 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 you know, it, it's so outdated. To, to, you know. But, All my friends now went and bought thousand dollar Nikon's. But but why? But I want I want you to talk about why an extra oral camera as opposed to an intra oral camera. What are your What are your I, thoughts? Because with extra oral, I can I can take a picture of the whole mouth. I can have the whole mouth in one one photo. With intra orals, you know, I can take a picture of a couple of teeth. If I take a picture of of the whole mouth. Uh, Try to take a picture of, of the full arch with my intro, and I have the the Schick system. Got it costs a lot. Uh, um, um, it's all distorted. It's not real clear. This, but then also I've got it on a print, and I can take that print and draw on it. Show them what needs to be done, how you need to to reshape something. What you know, especially with these wear cases. When you when you have the, the lower incisors, everything's worn down. You know, thirty percent, fifty percent of the tooth is gone. Then you can just take and draw. You know, play connect the dots of what this tooth is supposed to look like right on, right on the photo. Just to teach the patient. Just to teach them. That. Okay, so you you've uh, taken X-rays, you've charted perio recession, X-ray pictures. What what's next? Develop a treatment plan. Now, are you going to dismiss the patient this time, or are you going to do the treatment plan on the spot? Depends, depends on depends, depends on on what they need. Depends on how complex it is. Because at that point, you know how complex it is. You know, if it's a simple treatment plan, you can say, "Look, you need to have these restorations done. Everything else looks good. Let's just get you in and and do those restorations." So, so if it's not too complex, you're going to do the treatment plan on the spot. Right there. Now, right do there. you talk about the fees? Uh, no. No. Um, um, you know, my staff, uh, we, we, we get messy. We just had a big 
to do about this too, of getting information from from out of this room to to the, the ladies at the front so that they can develop a treatment plan because they know what the insurance is. If there's insurance or not insurance, they know that and they know what the insurance is and they know what we participate with and and they know the fees that the patient's going to be charged. Now, will, will they... Are, Will they come and talk about that in the clinical operatory, or will you move the patient up front? Mm -hmm. And do you mm -hmm. put them in a special room, or do they just? Are they I don't have a special room. We just put them in a in a in a kind of a quiet area at our front desk. Mm -hmm. I don't have a I don't have a kind of a consult room. All right. So what uh, what other um what is there any other procedures you want to talk about? Simplifying procedures, or you, you talk about the impression techniques, or um, you, you, you walked us through a crown prep. Uh, is there, what, what else did you want to talk about? Well, we could talk about, um, 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 a couple of things that, you know, it's important on some of these cases to take models and records and to get them mounted. And, and we do that at, at a separate appointment. Um, we, ch we charge a, a relatively low fee from what I read on Dentaltown. Uh, um, we charge like $250 for that and, and um, tell them up front, you know, we really should make some models and, 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 and get them mounted on an instrument for you. Uh, um, but we do that at a separate appointment. So what, 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 what do you have to see in someone's mouth before you say, I'm going to stop and take models? And will you mount these on an articulator yeah. or just hand, you, you'll mount them on articulator? Will you take oh, a yeah. face bow? Yeah, and take a face bow and, and mount them on a panadent. And, oh, okay, so so let's let's talk about that. What do you have to see in someone's mouth to say no? This is not kind of a limited exam. This is not kind bunch of, of a missing teeth. A bunch of missing teeth. So I'm going to be doing either bridges or implants, and and a bunch of of um, or a lot of wear. So I've got to restore a worn area. And then you'll take study models with alginates. Mm -hmm. You'll pour them up yourself. No, the, the so, I mean, I, I mean, you're off. Yeah, like that. You, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, right. um, and then, talk about your uh, a lot. What what percent of dentists you say did not use a face bow one time last year? Oh God, I don't know. But it's it's, pr it's pretty. I high. think I think it's pretty rare to use a face bow. Right. So so why don't you go into detail because you you've been educated. You've done pro postgraduate programs. Um. I'm a big fan of your 6,000 posts. Talk about why, which cases, and why you would use a face bow. I don't want you to talk in detail. So this kid driving to school who has, has, doesn't even have a face bow, he left it at dental school, and he, he dropped they it at the trash can on the way out. Um, why, yeah. why would – Well, if you're, gonna be, if you're going to be opening vertical, if you have a lot of wear, you've got to use a face bow. You've got to know where – you you got to know where that that joint is if you're gonna if, if you're gonna open vertical um, if you if you just have missing teeth the occlusion's okay you're not gonna have to change vertical you probably don't have to to use a face bow at that at that point but if you're dealing with wear or, and you're, or you're, if you're dealing with wear and you're going to change the patient's vertical, then you better be, you better be doing that on a hinge. I mean, I, I just did that with a case. I, I, I had a lady practicing in my area who, who um, was doing really a lot of out of cosmetics. She went to a, to an institute uh, down south of here and um, was doing a lot of cosmetics and not very well. And got into trouble with it, serious serious trouble. Where where they where the state board gave her the choice of uh, going back to school or giving up her license. And so she had a very small, uh, very small boutique practice, and um, just around the corner from me. And so we merged that practice with mine. So so I have a lot of these cases where she restored um, the upper arch. Uh, in, but not the lower. Again, an upper arch against porcelain, but not, but didn't do the lower and didn't protect the lower from wear. So I have a lot of, a lot of these cases now where she had done, you know, relatively poor dentistry in the upper arch with significant wear in the lower arch. I just finished one of them where we redid, we we redid all of her upper 
crowns. Uh, um, we had to, she had to go have a, a lot of crown lengthening surgery done. Um, and and um, the lower where there was, was, where the lower incisors and the premolars and molars were probably 50% of the lower incisors were, were gone, were worn away. 50% of the length was gone. And so we mounted the case up, waxed, waxed everything to ideal, which of course opens the vertical up, brought her in, took me like four hours, I brought her in and I rebuilt in composite each one of those teeth, just in, in composite, and, and, and uh, opened her vertical, and, and as she's going out the door, you know, I said, oh, we'll see you next week for photos, we'll take pictures of this next week, you know, when the tissue's better, and, and, and as she's going out the door, she says, how long till I get used to this bite? And I said, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it'll, it'll feel a lot better than it does now. And she came in this week for the photos, and, and, and she said, you know how long it took me to get used to the bite? I said, I don't know, you know. She said, two minutes, two minutes. And that's because we opened it on the hinge, brought her back to where she was, brought her vertical back to where she was at age 16, where it should be. And that is so comforting to patients to do that. So you you bought this woman's practice? Yeah, merged in. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, was it a merger and acquisition? Did you buy her practice and then just you took all the charts and not the equipment? And then what'd she do? Did she go back to school or? She retired. She's from a, a, a retired um, move to Hawaii. <laughs> she, re she retired. And, and yeah. so what? So what do you think her actual mistake was? Do you think she was? She was. Um, she was. She 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 was was working with minimal staff. You know, my staff bails me out, like yours does. It. My staff saves me. Uh, she was working with minimal staff. She had bought into the theory of 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 all the teeth have to be paper white, and um, you don't want to see any margins. So you want all your margins under tissue. Uh, um, and and then figured out from there that she could do this stuff um, pretty easily uh, with 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 using very basic techniques, not using articulators, not using stuff, but but through the labs that this group down south of here works with uh, um, could do just stuff. And and she was was not careful about taking impressions. I mean, a lot of the, most most of the margins are short, long, open, something. It was just plain so, sloppy so what, so what por porcelain do you think, what do you think is wearing down opposing teeth the most? Do you, do you think a lot of it's the material choice? Do you think some materials wear down the opposing teeth more than others? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, porcelain certainly does wear down. Felt, you think feldspathic is a lot more brutal works, than um, like Emacs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. Let me see that. We're going. We're trying something new now. We've we've gone into a, a lot of Emac stuff. I still do a lot of porcelain bonded to high noble, um, but a, a lot of Emac stuff on anteriors. We tried some Emac stuff on posterior. Had some fra fracture, um, and so, so we were starting doing you, you know on for second molars, lower second molars. Now I will only do gold or monolithic zirconia. Well, monolithic zirconia doesn't look all that great. Now they've come up with something new, and, and you, you know, I'm, Dave Nakanishi at Nakanishi Dental Lab uh, uh, does my lab work for me. And, and what's, get, Plug him, what's his www? What's his URL, do you know? NakanishiDentalLab.com. You're gonna have to, he's, can you spell that? That's a N -A -K -A -N -I -S -H -I, tough one. N-A-K-A-N-I-S-H-I, Nakanishi. Okay, spell it one more time, N-A. N A K A N A K A N I N I S H I Nakanishi Nakanishi dot com and where's he out of? In Bellevue. In Bellevue. Yeah. And what what's he? What, what you're saying he's uh, talking about a new zirconium? He got a, he's got something new. He he, he calls he calls it uh, uh, Imagine, and he says that the strength of this material is not as strong as monolithic zirconia, 
but it's three times stronger than Emacs and it looks great. So we're starting to we're gonna we're gonna try some of that. And um yeah, I only have seven restorations in my mouth, and they're all gold. But so many women, they always tell me, "Yeah, but you're, you know, you're an old bald man. What do you care?" Uh, it's just so hard to get. Um, I, I try to try to draw the line with uh, women on maxillary second molars. I said, I swear to God, if I do a gold crown on your maxillary upper second molar, I'm going to be the only guy that ever knows. You will never see. It. I don't think your ENT uh, will even know. Um, not good. Nakanishi. Uh, I don't know. I don't. N a k a n i s h i is not getting it. Yeah. But uh. So anyway, um. <clears throat> so what else did you want to talk about? Wait, mm -hmm. I only got you for nine more minutes. Oh well. You know, I love. I love. I love uh, the posts on on Dental Town that are about practice management and, and, and uh, because everybody has the same issues in practice management, whether, whether it be with patients or, or with, with their staff, you know, y'all have the, y'all have the same issues. And, 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 um, and it's, and it's kind of hilarious to, to read the posts from the young guys who, who are just getting started and, and they're try, trying to deal with, 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 uh, staff problems and whether it be uh, uh, just the behavior issues of, of somebody's going to text or somebody's going to do it their way and, and, and or or the staff starts to fight amongst themselves or and it, maybe the other thing is is um, is is when patients come in and and start talking to you start dictating treatment to you uh, um, um, I, I always one of the, a couple of things I always say on, on Dental Town is is that whenever somebody comes in and tells me what an idiot the last dentist was, I know who the next idiot is, <laughs> and, and 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 at that point I get very very cautious and I go very very basic. Um, the other thing I, I always say is 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 that. Patient-directed treatment has a high failure rate. That doesn't mean that you don't want to exclude your patient from your treatment decisions, but but uh, um, a lot of times patients will come in and tell, try try you know try to tell me how they want this stuff done, and and yeah, you can do you can do some of that, but but some of the things they want just can't be done. I want you to. Say, I've only got you for a few more minutes. I, I've got you for. Um, I've only got you for uh, seven more minutes. Um, I want you to give th your closing remarks on. You've been doing this from seventy two to twenty fifteen, four decades. You've seen this industry. Five thousand kids just walked out of dental school yeah. a month ago in May, and they're yeah, scared. One. They're scared yeah. because um, they have two hundred fifty thousand dollars of student loans. They're scared because they see corporate dentistry and they, they know that in the old day, uh, 50 years ago when I was a kid, every pharmacist was an individual like a dentist and now they yeah, yeah, yeah. all work for Walgreens. Um, so what, what are your predictions? Do you, do you think in 50 years we'll all be working for Walgreens? Uh, and what, what, what did you, you No, know no, 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 no. The, the market's changed. We know that. The market in dentistry has changed significantly. But what what didn't change, what didn't change is the patients. The patients are still the same. The what the patient wants, you know, well, well, there's categories of patients. But the type of patients that you really want in your practice, what what they want is that is that individual one to one intimate relationship with the dentist, with somebody who knows who they trust, who who obviously knows what they're doing. Uh, um, and develop that interpersonal relationship with patients. That's certainly been the most joy for me in my practice is, is seeing the, the kids and the grandkids come through and, uh, and talking with them. Uh, um, but, 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 you know, the, 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 the graduating senior 
It hasn't changed since I graduated. And, and I just hired a young man for an associate position here because I need some help. And, and I, want, I want to cut back a little bit. And so, and so he graduated right at the top of the class. And I'm here in, in, in the classic suburb of Bellevue, uh, you know, with, with Nordstrom's right next door. And, and, and all my patients are basically all Caucasian. And, and, and I hired a kid from Persia. Uh, uh, Iranian. Iranian, yeah. He's, he's been in the United States nine years, and he graduated right at the top of his class, uh, Armand Abedi, and right at the top of his class, and, and won all the awards, uh, did everything. So I got a, I got a patient. Where, where did he go? Did he go to what, Bellevue? Did he go to your he school, does. University of Washington? Yeah. yeah. So, I, so I got a I, – I, I said, okay, you know, here you go. Um, um, this guy's got a loose – implant okay I don't know what it is it was done in Argentina and it's loose he's you know this is Bellevue now is people from all over the world coming here to work with with Microsoft and and uh, um, so I I said I don't know what this thing is you know he's supposed to bring some information because he was going on a trip I said but but you know see if you can find the screw access in that thing and take that thing apart and just See, see what happens, put it back in. And so it turns out that it's a, an implant made in Holland. Uh, uh, Dymo was the, the brand. I never, never heard of it. And, was, and it made in, a, was it made in the red light district? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I think that's where the engineers lived. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it had a stock abutment that had an integrated, integrated screw in the stock abutment. And and um, used a slotted driver, so he couldn't torque it. So so and then this this crown on top of it was cemented on with temporary cement, but it had been there a year, or so you know we couldn't get it off there. And so I I put him in a room with this patient and said, figure it out, you know. And after a while, he comes out, and his eyes are big, and he doesn't know what's going on. And I mean, I had to go back in and finish the thing to you know get it off and get something back on but but that's what I love about dental town cuz guys like that will, will will take a picture on their iPhone and they got the dental uh, town app and they'll go I, post I, a picture I mean I, I see people every day say should I do an Emacs or a zirconia on this the patient's getting numb and before the 10 minute yeah. anesthetic got off five people yeah. like you yeah. bless your heart right, there's five responses have, have answered them yeah. yeah and I also think it's interesting uh, um you're saying uh, you live where in uh, Bellevue, where there's people from India and Iran and Argentina and everything, um, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, I, I I've lectured in so many countries and so almost all the countries. Like if you go to Vietnam, they're all Vietnamese. You go to Korea, they're all Korean. You go to Japan, they're all Japanese. You go to Poland, they're all Polish. Yeah. You go to Ukraine, they're all Ukrainian. But gosh darn, the United States and Canada, and England, it's about the only three you know, places in the world. I can't tell you the number of times I walk into a room and I have to tell them, you know, saying, "Look, I'm I'm a monolinguistic idiot." So. What's your name? How do you say your name? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's what I love. It. That's why America and England and Canada have, and Australia have such rich cultures because you got food and music and entertainment and wine and from every corner of the earth. It is amazing. And I still think the only city I've ever been to in the world where you can actually eat authentic food from every corner of the world is only, is only New York City. Maybe. And, and, and second to that would be London. But you that. can't do it in Hong Kong. You can't do it in L.A. You can't do it in, La you know, Africa, Latin America, no. or like that. Okay, so I got you for one minute. I just – on for in one minute, what is your graduation school advice to the 5,000 graduates? Just get out and try everything. Just get out and, and, and just just work. And, and, and this young man working for me works when he's not working in my office and he's at a community center – doing mostly walk-in patients uh, um, and he, you know and he's like god I had to do so many extractions my my arm was hurting he's a great big guy so many extractions my arm was hurting you know you know I mean my advice is to, to do every try everything try everything get tough you know go to work get get tough you know do this stuff so until you're until you're tired you know, and just keep your eyes open that, that what you learned in dental school is, is some of it's correct, but only some of it. 
Martin, and and, and there are so many other products and, and techniques and treatments that are successful. Uh, uh, that, that you just have to go out and try everything and, and see what works for you. And when you see something that works, remember it. And, and, I'd, and, 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 I, it. and I'd like to tell those graduates that uh, at my age, nobody gets to the top in under 10 years. So, oh so it's going to take you oh – you're going to have to do 10,000 units of everything before oh, you're, yeah. you're, you start to yeah. be good. And yeah. number two, remember that uh, – you know, you can answer a lot of questions by by just saying money's the answer. What's the question? And in this country of ours, as opposed to all the other six continents, um, you're always going to have the twenty five thousand specialists saying, "Well, you don't need to learn that." I mean, if you if you want to do that, you should send that to one of the nine specialties. And and I always want the young kids to say, "Well, when you were in specialty school, did you ever do your, do your first case?" How come you were allowed to do your first case? I'm not allowed to do my first case. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so, uh, you know, just, just try it. And, and what you're going to do is you're going to try stuff. And if you don't like it, you don't throw in the towel. You find out why you don't like it. Probably because you're not good at it. So do more yeah. units. Do more yeah. CE. I mean, here here we, have to, we have to function. The standard of care in my community is set by the specialist. So if I'm going to do a procedure, I have to do it at that level. So there are procedures I no longer do. Just and the, I, the ones I, the ones I don't do is because I I can do, I learned how to do them I just don't enjoy them well, like I used to do a lot of ortho I don't do so much anymore I ne I do, I've I've done pediatric dentistry because I have to I have to do it all the time but I would rather seriously be a uh, underwater basket weaver than a pediatric dentist yeah, I, I don't, bless I their don't hearts. do any, any any pedo um I don't do any endo I love endo I don't do any endo I can't make money at it. You know, I can't do yeah. it as fast as, yeah. you know, and I love it. And that's what I came to the conclusion with ortho. It's like, okay, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're flipping these chairs in 15 minutes. And if you're not mm -hmm. flipping, and, and you're flipping them in a half hour. Yeah. So Scare you're the hell out double. Of yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we are out of time. And I just want to say, Thomas, seriously, seriously, seriously. I mean, the fact that you are so giving and humble and sweet and nice and have answered 6,000 questions on Dental Town over the last decade, I mean, I always smile when I read your post. You you give Vince Lombardi advice on yeah, subjects from A to Z, yeah. and uh, no, no, I I just think you're a hell of a great guy. And thank you so much for spending an hour with me on your Friday. Oh, thank you, Howard. You know you're the best. And when I when I retire and get down to Phoenix, I'm coming knocking on your door for a job. Please do, please <laughs> do. I mean, gosh, we we got everything from clinical to websites to CE to magazines. Uh, yeah, I. Yeah. I yeah, I'll be your uh, I'll be your buddy in uh, in Phoenix, and we'll uh, I can show yeah, you where all the good drinks are. My buddy now. So thank you for everything you do. It's wonderful. All right, all right, and tell uh, your lovely lovely wife Linda I said hello. Oh yeah, she remembers you. <laughs> okay, have a great day. Okay, take care. Thank you.